Hi everyone, my name is Jessica Minton. I'm a senior psychology and art therapy student and I'll be talking to you today about my research on the cognitive effects of visual art production. So starting out, art therapy is the second most used creative art therapy in the nation. And it's been used in psychotherapy and counseling for more than 70 years. You might be wondering, what even is art therapy? And it's just how it sounds. It's using art as a therapeutic way in hopes of alleviating physical, mental, and emotional suffering. Art is used as a therapeutic modality because of its many benefits um, on the mind and the body and the soul, including being a means for emotional expression, a means for nonverbal communication, it promotes a state of well-being, it increases effect, it promotes feelings of control, and it enhances the overall quality of life. Art is created through many processes in the nervous system. Some areas of the brain that are used include the motor system, the somatosensory pathway, the limbic system, the prefrontal cortex, and all of the lobes of the brain. So with all of these areas of the brain in use, there is great potential to stimulate cognitive functions. Previous research has shown an increase in divergent thinking, neural activity, adaptability, and plasticity after creating a piece of art or doing an art activity. These findings from my senior thesis research last semester showed me that art can influence cognition. So I chose to explore this relationship further with my independent research this semester. So the hypothesis for my research was that visual activities, visual art activities, will improve levels of speed, focus, accuracy, plasticity, connectivity, and an overall brain activity score in college students. I created my research project in a way that will allow me to see comparable scores and cognition between two groups after an art activity is completed. I'll also be able to look at specific cognitive functions separately to see if something changed um, or if others didn't change, so I'll be able to compare those scores as well. So starting out, I recruited my participants through the psychology classes that were being offered. Um, they were offered extra credit to participate, which always helps with college students, but I ended up getting 33 college students to participate in my study. 18 of them were in my experimental group and 15 were in my control group. My experimental group did an activity where I asked them to think of a significant memory in their life, and they were then prompted to create a collage with magazine scraps um, to symbolically represent that memory, to represent the feelings and emotions behind that memory, and to just really reflect on that and use their creativity to make that collage. My control group, um, they were instructed to select a photograph from the ones that I had brought in. And with that photograph, they either connected it to a significant memory in their life or they used it to stimulate a memory or they used the photograph to kind of use it vice versa where it kind of triggered something for them. And once they selected their photograph, they did a reflective creative writing assignment to write about that memory. So my materials include the cortical metric brain gauge technology, which is how I assessed cognition with my participants. And I'll be talking about that a little bit later. Um, I used magazines and photographs, scrap paper, um, and those were all used in both the experimental group and the control group. So just some brief information on the brain gauge technology. It was uh, invented by Dr. Mark Tomerdahl and his colleague, and uh, he was gracious enough to let me use this um, for my senior research, and it is pretty amazing about what it can do. So the brain gauge technology uses vibrations in your fingertips to activate 
neural activity in your somatosensory cortex. This activation in your somatosensory cortex influences how you perform in the computer assessments based on your level of perception of those vibrations. So this can then be translated to how well the mechanisms behind the functions of what you are doing and what brain areas you're using are working. So I use this technology in order to measure cognition in all of my participants. So my procedure was quite simple. I semi-randomly assigned participants to the two different groups. Everybody did the pretest um, preliminary brain gauge cognitive assessment. I then gave them either the control group prompt or the uh, experimental group prompt with the collage or the writing activity, and then they completed one of those. And then after that, everybody completed the post test brain gauge cognitive assessment. This all happened in a one-time session for everybody, um, and it lasted about one hour. So my data testing and analysis was completed through a mixed factorial design test, measuring two independent variables. My first independent variable was time, and that was measured through pre and post values. Time is a within subjects variable because it measured the same participant scores twice with pre and post. My second independent variable was group, and that was measured between the experimental or the control group. Group is a between subjects variable because different people created each group and they did not do both the experimental and the control task. So for my results, I got kind of two different categories because of my two different independent variables. So I have differences in time and differences in group. Differences in time basically means that I'm looking at the difference between the pre and the post test scores. So I specifically saw a statistically significant difference in my increases of mean speed. So as you can see in this graph, my experimental group, which is shown by the purple line, there was a significant increase in their speed means between pre and post. Speed shows how quickly your brain is able to detect changes in your surroundings. Um, and this is done by testing white matter integrity and your frontal and parietal pathways. These are pretty promising results, this um, significant increase, because the frontal lobe is associated with motivation, memory, focus, and communication skills. So at this point, we're already seeing connections being made between the groups and cognitive functioning. Looking at differences in group, I found statistically significant differences in reaction time variability. Reaction time variability is the variability score computed between the first and the second reaction time tests. As you can see in the graph at the top, there was a significant decrease of reaction time variability means between my two groups, the experimental and the control group. Specifically, my experimental group, the purple line, has a significant decrease, which means that the participants in that group became more accurate with their response times and they showed less fatigue after completing the collage. I also found some marginally significant differences in the subtests of focus, timing perception, and temporal order judgment. Focus is also computed from the variability in reaction time tasks, and it is seen in the bottom graph looking at the focus means between the experimental and the control group. You can see the purple line that represents the experimental group 
has significantly increased between pre and post testing. The significant increase in focus means that the art activity had a positive impact on the participants attentiveness, mindfulness, and overall just focus of the tasks that were being completed. I also found marginally significant differences in timing perception. And timing perception shows how well your brain keeps track of time by testing the integrity of neural connections between the cerebellum and the cerebral cortex. So significant scores in that means that there's a continuity or an increase in cerebellar functioning and motor learning. Temporal order judgment scores reflect how well your brain is able to keep track of the order of events by testing your frontal striatal cortex. This area is in charge of executive functioning like decision making and information processing. So significant scores in temporal order judgment shows increasing connectivity or how well your neurons are coordinating and communicating with each other. So what does all of this mean? Well, my hypothesis was that I would see increased levels of speed, focus, accuracy, plasticity, connectivity, and the overall cortical metric score. And from my results, I found slight increases in speed, focus, accuracy, attention, and connectivity. From this, um, it is implied that there were signs of high white matter integrity, increased cerebellar functioning, and increased information processing across many areas of the brain. From all of this, I was able to conclude that people who completed the collage activity were less fatigued, more focused, and had faster reaction times than the people who completed the writing activity. So what's next for this research? Well, in the future, I would use a more diverse sample. Um, I would try to get people of a wider age range in my research because I would then be able to generalize my results to the um, general population since I only use college students between the ages of 18 and 22. I would also try to give them a longer time to complete the interventions. Uh, between the pre and the post test of the brain gauge, I had about 15 minutes in between to allow them to do the artistic intervention. So by giving them a little bit more time, um, they might be able to reflect more on that memory. Lastly, I would try to include populations with cognitive deficits. This would help me to compare results of people with cognitive de deficits and people without cognitive deficits to see what kind of um, cognitive functioning is higher in some people and lower in others and what kind of disorders have an impact on your cognitive state. So hopefully I will be doing this in my future, in my near future. Um, I was accepted and I will be starting a Master's of Cognitive Neuroscience and Developmental Disorders program in England starting in September. Um, I am doing this in hopes of furthering research on cognitive neuroscience and art therapy, and hopefully we'll be looking for some better treatment methods for people with neurodegenerative diseases like dementia and Alzheimer's disease. Lastly, I hope you guys got some good takeaways from this research. Um, it's just really important for me to emphasize how greatly your mind can be strengthened through art and it has a bunch of other benefits that come with it for your mind, body, and your soul. So thank you guys so much for listening.